Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by shamanspiritcenter.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today, I wanted to talk to you about reactive abuse. This is something we often hear about regarding narcissistic relationships and abusive or toxic relationships in general, so I thought we could talk about it on the show today. What is reactive abuse? Reactive abuse is what it's called when someone is the victim of abuse and they begin displaying some of the same abusive behaviors themselves, especially toward their abuser. For example, someone who is called names continuously may begin to do the same thing in response. Someone who is continually put down or attacked may begin to behave the same way, either toward the person who is putting them down or even toward others who have done nothing to them at all. Many people believe that those who have been abused would never hurt anybody else or behave abusively toward others because they know what it's like to be hurt that way. Unfortunately, this is just not always the case. Contrary to what some people believe, abuse often begets more abuse, and hurt people hurt people. So when someone is treated poorly, it's not uncommon at all for them to start behaving in the same way they're being treated because they're angry, they're hurt, they're confused, and they're frustrated. This is especially true for children, but it can and does happen with adults as well. Anybody can react this way to being mistreated, especially if the mistreatment is subtle or goes on for a long time. When the victim reacts angrily, in frustration, or aggressively, they are often blamed for their reaction and told that they are the abuser. This can create heavy guilt and shame in the victim because they know that their behavior is not okay. Why does reactive abuse happen? Even the most gentle animal will bite you if you provoke them long enough, and people are no different. Everybody has a breaking point, a point at which they can be pushed no farther without a big reaction. What often happens in abusive situations is that the person's breaking point starts to be easier and easier to get to. Less provocation is required in order to push the victim to this place of explosive reaction. Eventually, it can end up becoming a situation where the victim even seems to be attacking the abuser first because they're so emotionally strung out from anticipating being attacked themselves and from months or even years of being provoked, harassed, and tortured that they are instantly defensive as soon as the abuser comes in the room or speaks to them. They're angry, they're hurt, and they're conditioned to believe that they will be attacked or abused in some way. This creates an extremely defensive mindset that may result in what looks like offensive behavior. Now, listeners of this show know that this is very similar to the way pathologically narcissistic people operate, and it's one of the things that leads to victims asking themselves, am I the bad guy here? Am I the abuser? Am I the narcissist? The truth is, anybody can react this way if they feel attacked and abused. The problem is with the way the narcissist perceives things. Their behavior makes sense only when we understand that they perceive themselves to be under attack. Because they are actually not under attack, but they don't understand that, and because we can't see their distorted perception in front of us, it makes the behavior of narcissists appear offensive to us rather than defensive. If a person with no knowledge of the situation were to view reactive abuse, that would look offensive as well. It would look like the victim is attacking the abuser for no reason, exactly as the abuser does. Many smear campaigns are built around exactly that. Remember, narcissistic behavior is the ego's reaction to feeling defensive, and therefore this behavior can show up in anybody under the right, or wrong, I guess, circumstances. As human beings, we are all ego-driven, and because of that, narcissistic behaviors are not uncommon, even among those people who are not narcissists. However, there is a very large difference between displaying quote-unquote normal narcissistic behavior in a defensive situation and being pathologically narcissistic. These are very different things. Although, in some ways, narcissists are more like the rest of us than we might want to believe. And the truth is, both reactive abuse and narcissistic abuse occur for similar reasons. The person feels hurt and angry. They're frustrated. They probably want to hurt the person who hurt them. The difference is a person engaging in reactive abuse actually has been mistreated, whereas a narcissist has generally misunderstood the situation and is reacting inappropriately, often to things that did not even happen or are being grossly overblown. It's like the difference between smacking somebody because they hit you first and smacking somebody because you dreamed they hit you first.
Reactive abuse also happens because the climate of the relationship is such that this kind of behavior is not only accepted, it's encouraged or even rewarded. For example, screaming at the abuser may be the only way that they will listen to you. Calling them names may be the only way to make them understand that you really are upset. Becoming hysterical might result in what looks like remorse on the abuser's part. Manipulating or controlling the abuser may be the only way to prevent a crisis from happening. Becoming selfish and uncaring might be the only way to get your own needs met in the face of someone's overwhelming self-centeredness. In many situations, narcissistic people bring others down to their dysregulated and abusive level because it's the only thing that they will respond to. So what can you do about reactive abuse? While in many ways reactive abuse is totally understandable, it's not okay. The entire climate of the relationship is toxic and unhealthy at this point. Both people are behaving in ways that are toxic and unhealthy. Unlike the abuser, though, the victim truly understands that this behavior is really not okay from anybody, regardless of the reason, and they can suffer greatly because of the things that they've done, even if they feel that the abuser deserved it. Hurting someone for what feels like a justified reason is still hurting someone. And unlike the abuser, the victim actually cares about that. They actually care about hurting other people. Many people have in fact stated that this was the reason they finally ended the relationship. It was turning them into somebody that they didn't like. They became aggressive or angry or violent or controlling or manipulative or overreactive or selfish or uncaring or vindictive or something else that was outside their character. This is what abuse does to people. It's ugly and it's painful, but it doesn't have to stay that way. If you have noticed that these things are becoming a part of your life, it's important to remember that this does not have to be the way that it is. If you don't like it, you have a choice every single day to stop allowing this situation to turn you into somebody that you don't like. This is not about who they are. This is about who you are and who you want to be. That is completely and totally up to you. If you're carrying guilt or shame over things that you've done because of reactive abuse, try to forgive yourself for the things that you did before you knew any better. We are only doing the best we can with what we know at the time. Luckily, we have the power to learn, the power to change, the power to choose. So besides the obvious solution of getting out of that terribly toxic environment, some things you can do in general would be Learn to think before you react. This helps control your emotions. Practice observing your emotions without judgment of them or of yourself. Start examining your triggers safely and exploring them so you can learn where this emotion is coming from and why. Mood journals are actually great for that and you can find a free one on littleshaman.org in the tools section. Master the gray rock method to help with responding versus reacting and remember, gray rock is not about repressing your emotions. It's about controlling your reactions. These are two different things. Learn to process your emotions intentionally and in a healthy way. This helps bring that reactivity down. You can start an anger journal or just a journal in general to help with processing situations as they happen. Most importantly, remember who you are and who you want to be because once again, that is completely and totally your choice. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online, over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org and click the book and appointment tab to go ahead and do that. I teach workshops a few times a month, so if you're interested in what I'm running at this time, you can visit littleshaman.org to see that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by shamanspiritcenter.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.